So we've talked about the role of a GM, but what about that of players? How much control do they really have over their fate? What I'm not talking about here is their fate of life or death. That's often left to the dice, and I don't really want to get into that here. What I'm talking about is choice. If you have an elaborate adventure planned where the players will be fighting strange alien beasts on a distant world, and they want to bug out and nuke the site from orbit, and they can, will you let them do that? Now for a lot of games, player agency starts at character creation. You get to make choices about who your character is and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Unfortunately, for a lot of games, that's also where it ends. One little side note I want to throw in is that sometimes the dice or other players will get choices in your character creation as well, but that's kind of a different route here. I know that that's how Traveler works and that's how Fiasco works, but we're not really getting into that here. Now, player input on the story often ends after character creation, although it doesn't really have to. There's no reason why when you meet with your friends to create characters together that you can't also decide what the story will be about or what the world will be like. In fact, that may allow your characters to be more invested and more interested in the story as you create it. I'd like to talk to you briefly about the difference between influence and choice, because I consider that to be important here. Influence is something that I see as being changing the flavor of a predetermined story. This would be any tactical decisions you make, how you do a job that's been set up before you, and what color that you add to the world. Choice is a different matter entirely. Choice is your ability to affect what matters to you and what matters to your character upon what happens to them in the story and what what they really do with their time. Now the difference is to me a very important one and not a subtle one because the difference is all about freedom. Now one thing that's often brought up in the discussion of this is the idea of the so-called quantum ogre. Now this is a bad one for me because I've never actually used this concept in play but I'd still like to discuss it. So the quantum ogre works like this. In your plans for the tonight's session, you have an encounter with an ogre. And the players have some choice. They can go left, they can go right, and whichever path they take, there will be an encounter with this ogre. The ogre simply doesn't exist until they've made that choice. Very quantum. It works. Now there's a lot of long discussions on the internet about the quantum ogre, and if you're really interested in this topic, I recommend looking it up. It is an interesting in instance because it allows players to have the illusion of choice. They do get to pick left or right, and they may not realize which path leads to what, even though they're both the same. Myself, personally, I don't run things that way. I would more likely include the ogre encounter if they failed a tracking roll, that is a consequence. If they didn't fail a tracking roll, I go with what they rolled. They succeed. I don't complicate their situation more. I'd also like to make a note about encounter tables. Now, by rolling on an encounter table, you've pretty much determined in your game that there is going to be an event which is not important enough to be predetermined and is not necessarily a result of a player's actions. I kind of disagree with the whole concept. Now, you might say that you'd throw in non-combat encounters or no encounter at all in the encounter table. However, I prefer the world to be a little bit more meaningful than this. Now some people would focus in on sandbox games as well here because sandbox games allows players to really kind of have some choice and freedom in the world. But as someone wiser than myself once said, the only true way that you're playing a sandbox game is when the players get together and say, hey we're gonna open up a strip club and now that's what your game's about. Now even the act of creating a villain will affect player agency because you've now put a character in the world that the players have to deal with in some manner even if they have a choice of what methods that they use. I'm not saying it's wrong to do that, but you should be aware of what that does to the game specifically. If this is something you want to avoid, then I would say simply create characters that belong in the world and are affected positively and negatively by the character's actions. So why does any of this matter? Well, for a lot of us, if we can see the chains forming around us and our ideas, our choices, and our successes are denied influence over the story around us, then we can become very frustrated. and in my experience as well, a frustrated player is not interested in your game. You, Whatever plot that you were going to put them down is not worth it anymore. Now I'm sure there are people watching this who are concerned about the increased workload this could create for a GM who is trying to plan for every particular path that may be followed. But I can't agree. I have to say that if you're really following this path, you let the story emerge naturally from the player's actions and you simply have to improvise. You may not be the best improviser, but it's a skill that I think can be developed naturally. You also might be a little bit worried about what happens if you really have no idea what to do when something happens in the story. Well, I would say take five. Think about it. Come back. 
If you really are stuck, ask your players. Why is that such a terrible idea? Why are people so terrified of asking their players what should happen next in the story?